It's both Indiana Jones and National Geographic that inspired me to be an Egyptologist. When people initially think of the term space archaeologist, they think, oh, it's someone who uses satellites to look for alien settlements on Mars or in outer space. But the opposite is true. We're actually looking for evidence of past human life on planet Earth. If you really want to be a good archaeologist, you have to understand ancient DNA. You have to understand chemical analysis to figure out the composition of ancient pots. You have to be able to study human remains. You need to be able to do computer processing and, in some cases, computer programming. I think archaeologists are stuck, and we are losing our past at a very rapid rate. Tens of thousands of sites will be lost, and we've only unveiled a tiny percent of the past. You just pull back for hundreds of miles using the satellite imagery, and all of a sudden this invisible world become visible. You're actually able to see settlements and tombs, and even things like buried pyramids that you might not otherwise be able to see. We have so many issues with overpopulation and urbanization and site looting. And this isn't just Egypt. This is everywhere in the world, even in America. So we only have a limited amount of time left before many archeological sites all over the world are destroyed. I predict that there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of undiscovered ancient sites across the globe. The only way to map them and locate them quickly is from satellites. With population pressures, urbanization, and modernization encroaching, we're in a race against time. Why not use the most advanced tools we have to map, quantify, and protect our past? I'm looking at looting photos from space, and there are people putting their lives on the line every day protecting their heritage. I call these people the real culture heroes. There's always a little jump to your heart when you realize you've got looting. That's what I want to do. Ultimately, figure out a way to get the world engaged with discovery and protecting these ancient sites. Getting permission to use a drone in Egypt was problematical. We want to excite the world about what's out there. But we don't want them to say, oh, there are lots of sites in Egypt, let's loot. Discoveries aren't made by one person exploring by themselves. And discoveries aren't made overnight. People don't see the thousands of hours that go into it. How do you find a buried city in a vast landscape? Finding it randomly would be the equivalent of locating a needle in a haystack blindfolded, wearing baseball mitts. Eventually, when I started studying Egyptology, I realized that seeing with my naked eyes alone wasn't enough. Because all of the sudden, in Egypt, my beach had grown from a tiny beach in Maine to one 800 miles long, next to the Nile. What we did is we used NASA topography data to map out the landscape very subtle changes. We started to be able to see where the Nile used to flow. We can tell from the imagery a tomb was looted from a particular period of time, and we can alert Interpol to watch out for antiquities from that time that may be offered for sale. I am honored to receive the TED Prize, but it's not about me, it's about our field and the thousands of men and women around the world particularly in the Middle East, who are defending and protecting sites. We emphasize the features on satellite maps by adding colors to farmland, urban structures, archeological sites, vegetation, and water. The map we made of the 3,000-year-old city of Tanis requires no imagination. It has buildings, streets, admin complexes, houses, clear as day. World View 3 goes into the mid-infrared wavelength, allowing you to see very subtle geological differences on the sites at a 0.4 meter resolution. If you find a series of linear shapes in the same alignment as known archeological features, and they match excavated examples, you still need to excavate to confirm 
but you can be fairly sure that the imagery is accurate. Looting and site destruction are global problems. We have a tough road ahead, and one key will be developing more collaborations and using new technologies like satellite imagery. What these satellites do is they record light radiation that's reflected off the surface of the Earth in different parts of the light spectrum. We use false color imaging to try to tease out these very subtle differences on the ground. You can theorize as much as you want about what you think you're seeing, but until you get out there and dig, you can't tell exactly what it is. So we have to be really selective about where we dig. I've found numerous things, settlements, temples, possible pyramids, forts, roads, the list goes on and on. Seeing sights and features in places where we never looked or never thought things might exist is causing archaeologists across the world to think deeper about their sites or entire cultures. Archaeologists use datasets from NASA and commercial satellites, processing the information using various off-the-shelf computer programs. These datasets allow us to see beyond the visible part of the light spectrum into the near, middle, and far infrared. What if Hiram Bingham had the technology to find hundreds of other archaeological sites at the same time and create entire 3D maps of the ancient landscape accurate to within a few inches. Satellite datasets like Worldview can see objects as small as 1.5 feet in diameter. In 2014, Worldview 3 will be able to see objects as small as a foot. Once archaeologists have shown possible new ancient features, they can import the data into their iPads and take it to the field to do survey or excavation work. Technology doesn't mean we aren't digging in the dirt anymore. It's just that we know better where to dig. We have so many thousands of sites to find across the globe and new techniques to test. The field keeps evolving with the technology, which makes things exciting. Satellite imagery is the only way we can map the looting patterns effectively. I try to tell a lot of stories to make my students aware that the world is a very cool place with many problems that need solving and that they all can help solve them. I played varsity soccer at Yale and continued playing at Cambridge. I am part of a network of people monitoring what's happening at ancient sites in Iraq, in Syria, from space. We can see clearly the destruction. Looting speaks to a lack of economic opportunities. Frankly, we all would loot, too, if our families' continued survival depended on it. Think about what would happen if Indiana Jones and Google Earth had a love child. I use high resolution and NASA satellites and look for subtle differences on the surface of the Earth that locate buried ancient pyramids and towns and ancient tombs, which we then go and excavate. What is amazing to me as an archaeologist is that the more and more I study, I realize we are resilient, we are creative, we are brilliant, and this is what makes us human, and that hasn't changed since we've been human. Scorpions like holes. We had to put our arms in the holes to dig out the smelting residues. We always performed critter checks before an excavation, but one morning, I put an arm in and felt a sharp pierce. When I brought my hand out, it was red and already swelling. The most exciting moment as an archaeologist happened when I was looking at the great archaeology site of Tanny's, which of course we all know from Indiana Jones. We got satellite imagery of the city of Tanny's. We processed it and literally from thousands of miles away from my lab in Alabama, we were able to map the entire city. I'm an Egyptologist, I'm a remote sensing specialist, and I'm a space archaeologist. I can't tell you the number of times I've been walking over an archaeological site, and you can't see anything on the ground 
and pull back hundreds of miles in space. And all of a sudden you can see streets and roads and houses and even pyramids. Thank you.